Hello everybody, this is HD Shapes here. I'm back in the video. Hope this finds you well and in good spirits. Well, it's certainly been a while since I've done one of these. I hope I still remember how to do it, but muscle memory kicks in with videos and uh, many other things in life, I suppose. So I'm very excited to share a shave with a new razor uh, today. And this is a Friador, which you can see there. Um, this is a 472, which I just realized is actually written on the uh, tail there. I really appreciate the sort of uh, numerical numbering systems that uh, Friador uses uh, because I feel like often with straight razors, I'm just kind of guessing like, okay, I, I think this number goes with this or this model name means this, things like that. Um, it's also made under the Henkel's Zwillingswerk uh, brand names. Those are like knife companies in Germany. And this is of course made with Solingen uh, steel. And this is about a, a 13, tw uh, what's the math on this? It's it's a little bigger than a, than a 5 eighths, a little bit bigger than a 6 eighths maybe. And that's a full hollow grind there. It's got a beautiful kind of designed spine on it. Maybe you can see that. And um, it is a full hollow and it's stainless. Inox is what they use, I-N-O-X, meaning not, not oxidizable. I, the translation is a little weird there, but I you know what it means when I read inox. So this is on loan courtesy of uh, Greg, a very kind uh, friend and supporter of this channel. I, I really do like this razor. I love the stainless steel uh, feel and just the kind of inherent benefits that steel has over, stainless has over um, carbon. But we'll get more into that in a second. It's hot everywhere. In fact, if y it's not hot where you are, would you let us know <laughs> in the comments? I'm looking at you people in the southern hemisphere, uh, most likely. It's hot, so we're using Orbit, and I'm getting down to the bitter end of this tub. At, usually at this point, I just start scooping and uh, putting the soap I'm going to use each shave into a bowl so I don't have to kind of re-smush it in the tub, but that's certainly something you could do. And uh, I have the matching aftershave for that as well. For the uh, brush today, I'm wearing the Declaration Grooming shirt today. And I'm using the first, is it the first? One of the first decoration brushes I ever tried or owned. And this is a uh, prototype uh, Washington Shape B3 knot, kindly gifted to me by Scott, um, the one and only time we met in person here in Chicago. A very scrubby sort of knot, but it's broken in beautifully and Despite the fact that it's been losing some hairs, it still has plenty to go, and I'm trying to remain optimistic. Okay, so I think that's the gear we're going to use. I'm going to start loading the Orbit soap here. Um, hope summer has been going well for everyone. It's crazy to me that it is almost over. If you operate under the kind of school schedule, then... You know, school starts for some of us in like two weeks, which is really crazy. Um, I think I lose track of summer because it just gets really busy really quickly. And uh, the thing for me also is that my summer doesn't magically end, or I should say my busy season doesn't magically end when school starts. Um, I will probably be pretty busy up until October. And then November is usually pretty light. Uh, and then December, we kick things back in for end of year parties and holiday parties and things like that. So I hope everybody's had a good summer. Please let me know if you've done anything spectacular that you care to share, travels, uh, goals, achievements, things like that. Um, I am was making, I wanted to make sure that I did this video before I left town. Uh, next week. I'm very excited to be going to Portland, Maine for the second time ever. Um, I have very kind of uh, romanticized 
idyllic memories of being in Portland in the summer of 2018 when I was on tour up there. But we only were there one day and needless to say I didn't get to see enough of the town. So I'll be going there for the second time ever, which is really exciting. And also for the, gosh, dozen, two dozen time, I'll be going to um, the Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas area, which some of you may know is where I did my uh, college studies. And I haven't really returned there since I left uh, school. And so I'm looking forward to reuniting with some old friends um, and making some great music, which is ultimately the main reason why I'm going down there. Man, it's been like 105 every day in the North Texas area, and it looks looking like that weather is going to stay the same while I'm there. So I'm already thinking about like sweat rags, sweat towels, uh, buying a fan um, for when we have this probably outdoor concert we have to play. Oh, geez. Anyway, let's think about the cool orbit now. Um, lather's looking good. It is just absolutely gone everywhere. I'm going to wet my face a little bit here. The synthetic cooling has just been lovely um, with this Orbit uh, soap. And it's in the aftershave too. I've never tried Noble Otter Balm, so I wonder if it's in the Orbit Balm as well. That would be kind of a nice feeling, although I know traditionally it's a little more rare for um, menthol to be in a balm. They usually reserve it for aftershave splash. This is the V2 Noble Otter base as far as I know. Uh, probably one of the last soaps they did before they changed over to their current V3 base. I have so many Noble Otter soaps, it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, same with Declaration Grooming, they were just both really popular kind of artisans when I was first starting off in this thing. And um, I should have told myself then, you know, in three years, you're going to have too much and you're not going to be able to really appreciate or enjoy all of these soaps. Um, so, kind of learned my lesson there, but at least I am working my way through these soaps. And there is sort of a bittersweet uh, feeling when you uh, finish off a tub. So, um, yeah, that's also something I would love to hear if you finished any shaving products lately. I did finally finish that uh, Chateau Lux unscented toner that I kept kind of teasing everybody with. That thing would just never, never end, but finally did. Um, and I suspect uh, this Orbit will be done soon. So I'm going to keep lighting up and I'll bring you back in when I start. My first pass with the Friador. Okay, we're back, and let's go past number one with the Friador. So, this is my first time using a stainless razor. Stainless straight razor. And although there are a few companies now that offer stainless straights, um, I would say that uh, Fyodor is the one that is kind of historically most well known for this. And something I learned from another friend who had um, the uh, Ralph Oust uh, razors. He had the same model, but one was uh, carbon and one was stainless. And I was surprised to learn that the weight is really very similar. And 
it was something that he couldn't like as in the weight was so similar that you couldn't tell um, unless you had it on a scale um, and so I think the main drawback um, to getting a stainless straight is that it can take some time to learn about the honing process compared to carbon. It is it does require a little bit different technique from what I understand. Um, And so, yeah, I think that turns some people off, but there's also a little bit of a availability issue. You know, you're not going to have as much selection. If you're set on having a stainless straight. Um, however, if you're, if you're somebody like me, you don't actually hone razors, uh, it doesn't really matter, right? You just make sure you find a hone meister that knows how to work with these kind of inox razors. And then you're good to go. I'll mention that I've changed my stropping regimen a little bit. So with this razor, I've been doing 10 on the linen, 20 on the leather before and after the shave. I used to only really do before the shave, but like uh, 40 laps on the leather. And so I haven't noticed any you know, negative effects of switching to the before and after thing. Okay, first pass down, I'll rinse and come back for pass number two in just a moment. Pass number two with Orbit. Okay, we're just going to stick to two passes today. Let's start um, against the grain on the neck. We'll do the right hand on the left side. I want to thank Greg again for loaning me this razor. Very kind. I've been taking my sweet time with it and he's just been Very supportive and informative, as always. Uh, Greg is an interesting guy because I don't think I've, I don't think I correspond with anyone who puts as much information into the average message. Uh, I learned very quickly with uh, Greg that there was no way I was going to, you know, there's, there's, there's kind of a, it's kind of a courtesy thing of if someone sends you a long thoughtful message, then you should try to match them. And I learned very quickly that there was no way that I could do that. Um, with Greg, he just is so, uh, knowledgeable about, you know, math and science and things like that, uh, I could never uh, possibly keep up, so I just don't try. And I, I like this razor enough that it is at the top of my list um, for the next kind of straight to buy. 
I'm staying strong in my I'm not buying anything in 2023, but next year, next year I will definitely consider it. I like the practicality of steel. I keep saying steel, but I need to be saying stainless. I like the practicality of stainless. How, um, and this is a rather comfortable um, full hollow grind. But that's, but usually I prefer like kind of near wedges, um, at least with, you know, uh, razors that are from before, let's say 1900, I, I prefer the kind of wedge grind. And so I haven't heard of anybody who does stainless and a wedge grind. Um, I know, I mean, wedge is just not very common to begin with. And so the one manufacturer that I know will make a custom wedge for you. I haven't heard of them working with uh, stainless. That was a problem there. However, I also know that Friador made these uh, quarter hollow razors, half hollow, something like that. And so maybe I will try one of those at some point to, um, you know, see if that's uh, heavy enough of a grind for me in this particular, in this particular model. You can really hear this razor, which is fantastic. And I'm going to rinse, and then I'll come back to show you the final results, so to speak. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back, and this is the final result. Pretty happy with it. Not the closest shave ever, but that's not uh, my goal when I'm using uh, these straight razors usually. Uh, let's use a little Osma alum now, see if we get any good feedback. A little bit right here, under the nose. And a little there. So kind of on the left side, which makes sense. Maybe um, my, my left hand is not doing as well. So I'm going to let this sit on here for another 30 seconds or something. Um, I'll show some of the gear again. The Decoration Grooming B3, which is just losing a few hairs these days, but you know, that's okay. I've, I've talked to Scott and um, a couple other people that I consider to be uh, knowledgeable on this and they, they say that the brush is probably going to be okay and uh, that it's got a lot of life left in it. Um, so it's funny, I've, I've never heard of a decoration grooming not um, starting to shed, you know, like four years after it was made. Um, so I think mine is just sort of the odd one. And, uh, you know, I don't think other people should really worry. Um, it's uh, possible that because it was like a prototype brush, there was something different about the way the knot was set in there. And so um, it's definitely possible that it's only, you know, my issue because it's a prototype. Okay, Orbit Soap, getting to the end of that. And now let's use the matching splash. Um, I've never really found this to be too cool. Um, I haven't really tried to kind of mess myself up with the, with the synthetic coolant. But man, this stuff smells good. I have not got burnt out on the scent at all, surprisingly. And I've had the Eau de Parfum 
uh, almost a year now, and I've used that kind of regularly, and I'm surprised. Usually I get sick of the scent at this point after using it so much, but um, yeah, really just terrific scent. Um, I think the reason why I like it so much is because a lot of summer scents are really citrus heavy, and that's not really my thing. Uh, this does have bergamot, but basically everything else isn't citrus that are, that's, that's listed on the set notes. And so to me, that's a good thing. Let's rinse off the razor a little bit here, but uh, for the last time, the Friador, uh 472, selling its deal, stainless, full hollow spine, a little bigger than a 6 8 That was the figure I couldn't think of. So thanks so much to um, Greg for letting me borrow this. I'm very interested to send it back to him and see what he says about how much I potentially messed up this razor. Um, Greg is very uh, passionate about microscopes and examining blade edges and so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you know I did something wrong but surely you know it's nothing that he couldn't fix uh, with his honing skills. Okay, thank you all so much. If you made it to this far, made it this far in the video, see, I'm out of practice. Hey, I'm really happy that Michael Friedberg is back making a couple of videos, so please go check those out uh, if you haven't. He's the reason why I started doing all this, and it's just really great to see him back. Okay, leave your comments and questions down below, but for now, this has been HD Shaves. Take care. We'll see you again next time. Goodbye.